Today I am in the kitchen of my friend Hannah's house and I am on the pursuit to cut down my fizzy drink habit. I've been drinking way too much of this stuff and I've recently found out that it's not good for the bacteria in the gut that keep you healthy. What is good for the gut is kombucha and kombucha is a drink that you can make at home using a culture called a SCOBY. So we've got a whole little colony of scobies here which we're going to use to make some kombucha. I would love to have my homemade fizzy drink that's actually good for me. So what are we going to do today to make this? First of all, we've got these here that have been sitting here for a week. Start off by taking out the scobies. This one, this one here was made with black tea and chai, whereas Ooh. these four were made with black tea and green tea. Ah. So for each three litres, which is about how much fits in here, you have six tea bags worth of tea and one cup of sugar. Which the SCOBY eats most of, so it's not actually very sugary once it goes into you. Ah. Have you washed your hands? No. Okay, so first of all, wash your hands. Okay. And then I'm going to get you to have a feel of the SCOBYs and take them out one by one and put them in this bowl. Okay. We've got Tarani here with us and she's going to help us do the honours. Tarani will show you, put your hand in, pull one out and put it in the bowl. Ooh. Yeah, just like that. Go on Alex. Do these take on the flavour or is this just water? So that's beforehand, that is tea and sugar. Yeah. And then the SCOBY eats the sugar and turns, it, turns the whole liquid into kombucha. Oh, okay. So this essentially is our kombucha? Yes. Oh, okay. Can you just anyone? sit these in the cupboard mm -hmm. and they just grow. Yeah. And then we always keep a little bit of, the, we call this yeah. the vinegar, uh, to add to the new ones. So I need you to take one of these and just cover it. Tip it into okay. the cupboard. So this is kombucha. Now if you um, drink it as it is, it's just plain kombucha. Do you want to try it? Sure. Plain kombucha with that sort of base. Oh, it's not bad. No, it's, it's And gonna... it's quite fizzy. Yeah. Already, yeah. Already. And so that's the end of the first ferment is what mm. we call that. And so now when we bottle it, we're adding the flavour and uh, the longer you leave it, the fizzier it becomes. Uh. So you've tasted enough? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would drink that. Oh, I would. Then. Yeah. Tons. It's good for you. Get it in, yeah. Could you make it with a sugar substitute like coconut sugar? Sometimes I use maple syrup, which is actually what I've done with this. This pot here is, um, have a smell. Oh, yum. Yeah, that's strawberry Ooh. tea with maple syrup to, fla to sweeten it. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna pour the plain kombucha into the bottle about two thirds of the way. So probably, there. yeah, about there. Okay. We have options of flavouring. Mm. This one's kawakawa. I've brought some kawakawa leaves inside too, just in case people didn't know what they looked like. I choose the ones with the holes in them, because that means they're ripe, because oh. the bugs are eating them. Yeah, you just rip them all up, put them into a pot. With this one I've added a, um, some sugar as well, just for, for taste. It's a very unique flavour and goes fantastically with kombucha. Okay. Fill it up to where it starts being straight. Yeah, oh, 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 bit much. But that's perfect. That means we're gonna tip some out and you're gonna drink it. Yay, it's fizzy. Ooh. Yeah, kawakawa is really good mm. for you. It's been used as Maori rongoa medicine for years. Yeah, mm. so it's on top of the kombucha being good for your gut, then that's also good for like your everything. Once you put it in the fridge, it stops the fermentation process. So you actually leave it in the cupboard for at least two days. The fermentation process makes it fizzy, isn't it? So if you want an extra fizzy brew, you leave it out longer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Tomorrow, we'll burp them, which means open them up and see how fizzy they are. And the ones that do fizz up, then you need to burp them every day. But if they don't fizz up, then you can just leave them. So if you don't burp them, when you actually do go to eventually drink them, they'll just explode. 
Yeah. Sometimes. Exactly. Got to burp them babies. Burp them. Yeah. As you can see, you can use any kind of bottle that you've got, as long as it's got a good seal. Mm. So keep your finger there and Alex can go ahead and fill it. This is our speciality, I think. It's probably my favourite one. Apple, beetroot and carrot. So this is a great way to get your five a day, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Oh, I like this one. Oh, it's chunky. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That one. Screw it on. Yeah, it's this one. And then we've got our label, apple, carrot, beetroot. And if you love learning how to make kombucha too, join me for part two when we make even more unique flavours and Hannah shows me the process of the first ferment. We'll catch you then. Thanks for watching.